Okay? What's the catch? Those were my actual first words when I was shown these two lines for the very first time. For their output, it just didn't seem feasible that they could be made in such form factors. The 60 watt is about the size of a whiskey glass, and the 100 watt is like a really, really thin mirrorless camera. We have traveled back in time to the launch event for the G60 and X100 here in beautiful Bangkok, Thailand. And first impressions for these two lights, aside from really, really small, impossibly small. Aside from the fact that these two are unconventionally small, they behave and perform exactly like how you would expect a full-sized 60 watt or 100 watt bicolor COB LED would. Just with that size advantage alone, you would already find it easier to rig these up in awkward locations. Like you would do stuff like clamp this together with a magic arm off of some furniture, which isn't something I would typically do if this was a full sized, well, conventionally sized fixture. This is the Mirrorless G60 next to the Godox SL60. I acknowledge that we are looking at technology quite a few years apart, but still. I was considering doing the brightness test segment at night because considering this is a 100 watt light, so I'll be honest, I thought it didn't stand a chance against the sun. You don't see my face right now because I'm being completely backlit and we're exposing for the sky. But this is being battery powered right now. This is the X100 and it's at full brightness. Turns out it does stand a chance against the sun. I know for sure my eyes don't stand a chance against it, but honestly, I did not expect this amount of output from a light this small. Here's some footage I captured at their launch event in Bangkok. The point of all this was really to show how easy it was to conceal these rather punchy light sources within a set, again due to that small footprint. Both these lights come with quarter inch mounting threads, which are very accessible and do make a lot of sense considering their size. But if there is one complaint I have about these two, it would be how it isn't super straightforward if you want to just pop them on a good old baby pin light stand. The best way around this is to use their Bowens mount adapter, which can then take a baby pin. It's also perhaps the most balanced way to mount these lines with a full size Bowens mount softbox, the way the little ZY mounts, again, pure coincidence that my initials happen to be the same two exact letters, but that way the mount on the fixture doesn't have to bear the full load of the softbox. They also happen to make this really tiny and really cute foldable softbox that fits natively onto the ZY mount. These lights of course can be controlled remotely using a companion app. The app to look for is called ZY Vega. And the pairing process was very straightforward. Your lights show up, tap them to pair. In addition to the individual lights controls, I also really appreciate this control center page, which lets you control all the fixtures at a glance. Really, really nice touch. Output aside, the most notable difference between the G60 and the X100 is the way they've been designed to be powered. The X100 gets its own little removable battery pack. It clicks into its side, which then kind of becomes a grip for the light. The G60, on the other hand, has no out of the box battery solution, but that does not mean you cannot power it on the go. Of course, you can power both these lines of house power using the included AC adapter, but they both also support powering over USB power delivery. So in the field, you can quite easily run the G60 off a USB power bank. Now, you can actually do the same for the X100, but generally speaking, portable 100 watt PD power banks are a bit tougher to come by, so I suppose that's the reason the X100 gets a tailor-made battery. Now, will anything blow up if you plug in USB power that isn't powerful enough to run the lights at maximum? You can see I'm filming this relatively uninjured, so no. In fact, it quite intelligently displays how much power it's currently getting, and it would then adaptively limit the maximum brightness of the lights based on how powerful your USB power source is. I was also curious to find out how long a single full battery for the X100 would last if I were to drive it at maximum. So I did an outdoor torture test for the X100 because there was literally this other burning question about it. 
You see, such a powerful light in such a small form factor does sound like a recipe for overheating. Should I be concerned? Here's the light being left on max brightness outdoors and exposed to the elements elements namely a very hot Southeast Asian afternoon served with a healthy dose of direct sun. Battery life is claimed at 30 minutes of runtime at full brightness and it would appear to be more or less exactly that. I then pulled the light aside to have a look at it with my thermal camera and while it never overheated and shut itself off, the light was definitely rather warm. Now, this was expected though. We are talking about a battery being discharged at a constant draw of 100 watts. There was a COB being lit up and it was a very sunny afternoon. Holding the light in my hands, I would describe the temperature as uncomfortable. Granted, the light does come covered in heat warning stickers when you unbox it, but as long as I wasn't touching the actual COB surface itself, it never quite got to the point of being too hot to handle without gloves for my hands at least. I then moved back into the studio for of course yet another torture test. I've invited the G60 along as well this time and I've left the lights on continuously at maximum for over three hours. Again, to see how well they hold up in terms of heat, but this time I also wanted to see how noisy the fans were. You see, if such small lights are able to remove heat from themselves so effectively, I would imagine the fans to be doing quite a lot of work. And I don't know about you, but I tend to get quite noisy when I'm doing a lot of work. These lines have been on for well over an hour. We are in an air conditioned room, so there's some hum from the air conditioning. On the X100, it's probably the louder one of the two. It's a bit of a hiss, a bit of a squeaky hiss if you go right up against it. On the G60, you have to go right up to its vent and you get the faintest hiss. So surprisingly exceeded my expectations yet again. Three long hours later, I found myself once again impressed both lights were still on as they should be, but the G60 was actually running surprisingly cool. The more powerful X100, warmer than the G60, but it's actually very comfortable indoors. I genuinely believed that shrinking a COB fixture to sizes this small would absolutely come at the expense of something. But these have delivered in terms of output, they don't overheat, and they're kept cool without being noisy. These have now become my new go-to lights to pack when I'm on the move for very obvious reasons, and it would appear that there is no catch. They just work despite being small.